What's up guys, in this video we're going to make a simple little box here. These exercises are really easy, but they're also really good to reinforce uh, basic hard surface modeling concepts, boolean management, modifier management, bevels, um, anything you commonly use in hard surface. So these are always pretty fun to do, and I enjoy making the tutorials. Now I also want to mention some uh, design considerations when you're making these things, because a lot of people doodle boxes, but they don't look as good as they could. I'm going to give you some tips on that, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is move this, let me turn on screencast keys because you want to see what I'm pressing. I'm going to move this to the top of the grid and we're going to move this face up by, we'll just hold control and snap it up like that. So now we have like a, an elongated cube, right? So the next thing I want to do is go into edge mode and control alt click on these edges and give this a good amount of bevels right here to get this type of thing. And you know what? Let's move that down a bit and then hit it with a sharpen, Q, and then sharpen. Of course, um, links to hard ops and box cutter in the description. And yeah, we have this basic shape, and that's the that is generically what this is going to look like, right? So the next thing I want to do is add in a hole into the top. So we're going to tap into face mode, and we're going to inset this top face with the I key and then extrude down with the E key. I'm going to pull this one down pretty far so that way I can control B to bevel this and give this a good amount of segments as well. Now check this out. Um, the first thing actually let's alt click on this edge so that way we can add a chamfer. We'll do control B and then chamfer and we're going to get this type of effect going on. Now you're going to notice we kind of have like a visible line right here and that's because we actually have some sharps marked so what I'm going to do is just alt shift click on these areas and then Q and mark to unmark those so that way it's not really going to be a visible sharp so just kind of a, an aesthetic thing not really necessary now what I want to do is make like a little um, casing on the inside I guess so what I'm going to do is expand the selection so basically you press control plus on the numpad and that'll expand the selection so that's what I want to do here and then we're going to shift click on curve extract, hit it with that. And then we're going to have this type of effect going on. Cool. So this is like the base shape I want. This is kind of what I'm going for and it looks pretty good. So once you kind of have this, you can really start doodling and getting additional effects and the type of design that you want. So what I think I'll do is pull this up just a little bit and then maybe we'll drop a chamfer. Um, you're going to notice we have a solidify modifier here, in which case we'll apply that and then maybe give this back little area, small little chamfer like that. So maybe a bit too big. Let's do a very, very tiny one. There we go. And on top of that, let's go into the control tilde menu and turn on this HN key. So that way when we uh, add a bevel, it'll automatically add a harder normals to it. So we'll do that in a second, um, apply our bevel. But the first thing I want to do is give another little chamfer on the outside. So we'll alt click this side give a little chamfer there. You can kind of see how these chamfers kind of make the designs look a bit more interesting. Pull this down a bit. And now the next thing I want to do is use an inset boolean. Now these inset booleans are super powerful because they make the model just look a little bit more appeasing. So I'm going to go into Ngon, select this area, and we're just going to click and then click, double click here, and pull this down. And if we press the I key, we can add in an inset boolean and the T key to solidify it or um, adjust the thickness rather. So we have that. And now what I want to do is mirror this effect to the other side here. So across the X axis. So in hard ops, we'll press Alt X and then run a mirror. And I want this to be a little bit skinnier. So what I'm going to do is Q and then ever scroll to recall that cutter. Now the thing with inset booleans is that inset booleans are cutters within cutters. So if you're running an inset boolean, you have to recall the cutter twice to get to the original cutter. So it's like a nested cutter basically, but if you just recall it again, you'll be able to simply move this back a bit. And then we're going to have something a bit closer to um, the effect we want. Alright, great. So now that I have that, I want to add in a small little detail here on the top. So maybe what I'll do with the end gone cutter, I'll just hold control and just kind of, you know, get something like this. Double click, and 
I don't want to cut on the normal orientation. So what I'm going to do is go up here to view align. So that way I can actually do it based off of the view instead of the object. And then we'll press the tab key and then just drag this down. And then maybe, you know what, that'll be fine. I think that'll be all right. Might be a bit too big. So perhaps we could scale it down, move it up. But you know, you get the point. Pretty cool. Move that back a bit. Okay, awesome. Uh, the next thing I want to do is actually add in a cube with Shift A. And we're going to scale this cube down until it's right within those boundaries there. And move this up. And then Control Alt click these edges and then just bevel them. So, really easy stuff like we've been doing. Okay, cool. So, now that we have that, we can add in an additional chamfer here. And I think this could be a bit bigger, so I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. And you know what? I want this bevel to be a bit bigger. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to undo this and scale this even bigger. Because once the bevel rounds, it'll still be within those boundaries. So um, let's make sure, first of all, um, scale is uniform, which it is. And then Control-Alt-Click and try running this bevel again. And um, we're just going to make sure it kind of matches that curvature there, which it does. And now once we have that, we can hit it with a sharpen, move it down, and then hit it with a bevel. So pretty cool stuff, nothing complicated there. And yeah, looking pretty good. All right, so a big point in this video is concentration of details. So whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, I don't care. If you want to make these little, uh, any model really, if you want to make the model look more... Um, just wowable as I like to call it like someone looks at it and they're like wow that looks good even if it's simple you want to put a concentration of details in one specific area and you'll see how this will look once we finish the model but if you put a lot of details in one specific area and leave a lot of details just kind of empty in other areas this is actually a lot more appealing to the human eye than if you scatter details all around a piece like look at the space shuttle for example the interior before they discontinued the space shuttle, of course, the interior looked awful. There were just buttons and things everywhere, it's including um, uh, international air, just airline cockpits. They look awful. They're like, there's buttons all over the place. There's no real aesthetic to it, right? Whereas if you guys have seen the new SpaceX interiors where um, it's, there's just like the screens and the windows, it's super simplistic, but there's actually a lot of details in one primary location. And these are the types of things that kind of make human beings naturally become attracted to models like this. Because if you have a lot of detail in one place, your models are naturally going to look cooler. So avoid throwing detail all over the model. Try to focus detail on one area and you're going to get a lot better results. So um, with that being said, let's add some more stuff. So what I want to do is drop in a, let's go to object align, drop in a little thing right here. And then we'll go to ever scroll. And then if we go into edit mode on this cutter, we can uh, press Q. And if we control click on mark, this will add in a reverse bevel, as you can see. And you're going to see we have some shading warps. And that's because we need to adjust the auto smooth angle, which you can do in here, of course. Right? You can adjust it that way. Or what you can do is simply select this object. Yeah, you can you know adjust it there. But you can shift click on sharpen instead and adjust the auto smooth that way by just moving the mouse left and right a bit easier. And I want this to be a bit smaller, so I'm going to scale it down, move it up, and let's move it just a bit further this way, right? And then we can mirror the cutter, so we can mirror the cutter or we can just mirror the object. In this case, it doesn't really matter. So Alt X and then, whoops, we'll mirror that. And let's go ahead and hit everything with a bevel. So bevel, small little bevel. Same for all these guys, just to kind of make it pop a bit more. Like that. And there we go. Now it looks a bit better with that. Now the next thing I want to do is make a little bolt on the inside. So if we recall this cutter again, there's actually a cool trick. So the way reverse bevels work is they flip the normal of the top face. So that way when you bevel it, it bevels in the opposite direction, giving this type of... um. Uh, natural bevel on the object whereas if I press shift N it's gonna flip the bevel to the correct way so that's all a reverse bevels doing so what I want to do is duplicate this piece 
make it a solid, and then flip the normal so that way we have a button. Now a nice and easy way to duplicate this and turn it into a solid is to shift click on the shade solid option in the settings. We're going to do that and now if we press shift 2 we can hide the cutters collection and you're going to see it also move this piece back to the main collection so that way this doesn't get hidden. Now if I go into edit mode and press shift N it's going to flip it and now we have access to a little button here which is pretty cool. One of my favorite tricks and then we can mirror this pretty easy stuff and then maybe as like a final detail I'll turn on the snap here and then just make like a little cut on that and then um, you're gonna notice if I try to drop a bevel it's gonna use the current bevel here we could either apply that bevel or we could add an additional bevel by just control clicking on bevel to add in another one so now there's two bevels to control one is for the little highlights and one is for the um, the actual bevel so let me find it and you can hold control and scroll up or down to swap between the two so you can adjust this one control scroll and then adjust this one which is pretty cool so um, let's do a little bit more like that looks good so I'm gonna go to this top piece right here and add some more details notice how if we go to the top view or really anywhere um, the eye is automatically looking into the front area like all the details kind of getting concentrated in this general area which kind of makes it more aesthetically pleasing because everything else is pretty empty so that's why we're doing this now the next thing I want to do is drop some detail right here and keep in mind this isn't like any specific piece this is just like a modeling exercise so um, you can still make simple objects that don't really have any practical use look cool that's always the goal so that way you can apply it to an object that does make sense right now I'm gonna add a little detail right here and press the X key to add in a slice so that way you have a little slice type of thing here now one little trick I like to do is come in here and apply the the uh, the boolean so right now it's not applied but if I just hit it with a smart apply now I have access to this piece here and I can just add in a little bevel like that and these are pretty cool for making notches I have an old tutorial on this so uh, make sure you check that out all right so what else could we add in here maybe a few more notches on this area so what I'll do is just hit it with a let's do a box from the top we'll go to view align and then if we press the V key we can actually add an array and then scroll up and then if we just click and then drag this down we're gonna have some little notches here and then just alt X to mirror <coughs> excuse me to the other side let me pause the video clear my throat if any of you guys start making YouTube videos, be prepared for the sudden pauses and need to clear your throat because um, lots of talking will take a toll on your voice, I'll tell you that much. Um, so we have this. I don't really know if I like that. Looks alright. Maybe we could do one, or um, not one, three instead. So let's do an array and then just reduce it by one. Maybe that'll look a bit better. Or maybe we could put it over here and move it up. I don't know, just kind of playing with different shapes and forms. This kind of looks like a, a goblin almost. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting enough, like the eyes right here and the face, the chin, whatever you want it to be. Anyways, um, let's go in here and add in some wedges. And if we press the W key in hard ops, we can turn this into a wedge cut, which is pretty cool. We'll do something like that. Looks good. And then maybe a few little... Um, bolts right here, so we'll do one in this area. Let's go back to object align Do one in this area and then one in this area Like that Looks pretty good now. This might be a little bit tricky to do but let's try w running one more inset boolean It's gonna be a tight squeeze, but it might work. So let's try um, What we're gonna do. Oh, this looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Hmm that's interesting but um, that's not what I want so sometimes you accidentally find cool looking shapes but anyways I'm gonna go in here and if you apply a boolean and you want to switch it to a different boolean you can always do that by just pressing Q and then shift the bool over to um, we'll just scroll up until we find inset and now we're gonna have to press the T key to adjust the solidification this is where I was kinda worried I'm guessing some hotlinings occurring meaning we're not going to easily be able to catch this area. 
no matter which way I scroll. I don't think we're capturing. Oh, there we go. Just barely. The insets can get very tricky, especially once you run on like a smaller size. So um, you have to really roll this and be careful. It looks like we were just able to capture it, but we are getting some minor artifacts. So we might have to drop the bevel size just a bit in order to capture that area. But it looks good and we were able to do it. It just looks a bit nicer, a bit, I don't know, more aesthetically pleasing. All right, so we have that. Now what I wanna do is add in, now although I say put a lot of detail in the front, or not in the front, but just in one concentrated area, adding detail in empty space, but just not heavily, is also a very good idea. It'll kind of make it pop a bit more. And although you'll subtly see detail in the back in areas where it's not super important, it's gonna slowly bring attention back to the area of importance that has a lot of detail. So I'm not saying to leave it completely empty. I'm not saying to put nothing there. I am saying to avoid overdoing it. Keep only a few things in the empty space and a lot of things in a concentrated area. It'll look a lot better. But what we could do is add in some notches back here, right? And it looks like it's not working because the mirror is coming from this side to this side. So we'll just go here instead and let the mirror take care of it. And now we kind of have some buttons or something in the back, but looks all right. Let's see how it would look back here instead, maybe. Would this look any better? We could do a wedge cut. Maybe this will be a better option. Let's delete this one out. That's okay. We'll leave that for now, maybe. I don't know. It's a tricky one. I'm going to go with this one because the original one had this. And next thing I want to do is add in an additional uh, inset boolean right here to kind of separate, give some separation to the back piece. So we're going to do something like this. And then just cut down. We'll press the I key and T to solidify. And just make a very slight inset back here before it hits this area. Looks good. And then maybe make this area. We'll just go to ever scroll and scroll up until we get to this cutter and scale it on the Y. You're gonna notice it actually, um, the inset's affecting the size of this one. So maybe what we'll do is, let's go back in here, let's go here. And then, oh, I see the problem. What I'm gonna do here is do this afterwards, just delete this one out, run the inset and then run the cut. Otherwise, just gonna be a mess. So do this. The inset boolean is probably the most technical boolean out there, and it can be pretty ugly. Oftentimes, um, NURBS-based softwares are more powerful for inset booleans, like Moi 3D, perfect for them. But, um, you know, there's limitations in polymodeling, so you give some, you take some. Now, we're going to do a little notch back here. There we go, much better. All right, so we have a lot of detail focused here on the front, which is great, but um, now that we have most of the detail sitting here in the front, we could work on some space that's just super empty. Like back here, I'm not saying to leave it completely empty, but make it a little bit less boring. For example, instead of having nothing back here, you could perhaps put, I don't know, just a cut like this. That way it's not super heavy, but it does kind of break the monotony of the object. And then what we could do is maybe... I don't know. Before we do that, let's, you know what? We'll just do it now. We could add a little chamfer on the bottom. Make that look cool. And then let's go into the front view and maybe make some little cuts on the side. Like this. Looks good. And then if we just recall that cutter and then do that shift click on the shade solid trick and shift two to hide the cutter, we can kind of play with this one move this back a little bit um, let's drop a bevel on it looks like we're still getting a little bit of artifacts right here can we drop this a little bit more there we go so we still have the bevel it is quite tiny though but it's kind of a trade-off now on this one let's bevel this edge right here we'll drop in a circle and then another one just to kind of make this a bit more appealing and mirror it. And now we have this type of thing, maybe scale this a bit on the Z, kind of like that. 
And then maybe just to kind of, you know, knock this area off, we could do a box cut right here. We'll make this one fairly long, like this. There we go, that'll be fine. And then what I want to do is recall this cutter. And one trick you can actually use in objects like this is you could cut the cutter to make these cool looking shapes. So if I cut the cutter at this angle, you're going to see it makes this little notch on the inside, which is awesome. I like that one. And you're going to see, so although we have various details kind of floating around in the empty space, we have a lot of the details focused here on the front. And this is the type of, type of design thinking you can really start to implement in your models to make it look uh, not only more pleasing to the eye, but also a bit more professional looking. Not that this is anything professional, this is a sketch to use the tools, but the same can be applied to any project. So that's about it for this video, guys. Thanks a bunch for watching. Um, try to make something like this, but don't copy me. Try to do something on your own to not only reinforce your modeling skills, but to also uh, get some design practice in there and just kind of see what types of cool designs you can come up with without copying the tutorial verbatim. So that's about it for this one. Um, I do want to mention May 1st, our uh, new Patreon tutorials dropping on the sci-fi mech arm. This one is probably one of my favorites on the Patreon. About three hours long modeling tutorial. You're going to learn texturing, rendering, materials, all that stuff will be included. 10 bucks a month. Can't be more fair than that. So make sure on May 1st you guys sign up for the Patreon and check out this tutorial. This one is going to be super useful. So that's about it, and I'll see you in the next video.